it's broke, my fellow peasants. My microphone, my beautiful blue yeti, is gone. Kaput. Dead. Pfft, sunk. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm having to use the audio from my mic. Sorry if this sounds like crap. Um, and unfortunately, this is going to put a halt on Theory Week. Because I can't be recording videos in this kind of quality. So I'm really sorry about that. But I think it's good enough to um, break down this trailer. And this is the GDC 2017. We spoke about this just yesterday. The 100 million blades of grass, the Nvidia little collab that they've done. And uh, before I do any blind reaction, because I've not seen the trailer yet. Um, I hope it's dope. I, I like to go into the comment section and get a feel for it. So is this, it looks like this is running on 1080 Ti, probably GTX graphics cards. That's why I can never get that excited, because we know a beefy machine is running behind it. And the thing is, the limitations with FF15 was always on the PS4 end and the Xbox side. The limitations were on the console, not so much on the Luminous. That's where most of the issues come from. But the really big thing I just want to point out is, there's this whole argument about, oh, the story, the story, they shouldn't focus on graphics, they should focus on the story. And I agree with that, uh, and I've kind of spoken uh, along the similar lines, but... The thing is, people have taken it a bit further. Some, pe some people are arguing that graphics don't affect the story in the slightest. And you're an idiot if you believe that graphics affect story. The graphics division, so they're saying, <laughs> and the story division are two separate things. And they don't affect each other. I mean, that is bullshit. I mean, did you just make this stuff up? The graphics team and the story team are two separate things. And one doesn't affect the other nonsense. If the graphics team takes six months, or the tech team takes six months to a year to design every single area, and due to technical limitations and time limitations, um, areas get cut. I mean, we saw it, areas like Gwalia, Insomnia. Well, guess what? If an area gets cut, so does the story that was going to be going hand in hand with that area. So it's just not true, guys. And graphics have been a holdback on this game. So there is a middle ground. There can be good games with good graphics and good story, but there's also, they do affect each other. So I, I just want to throw that out there because people are talking some real shit in the comment section. But Goofy Headset, engage, let's see what they've got. Um, oh, here we go. GDC. Oh. <laughs> this is funky. The Journey of Luminous Studio Pro. Oh, 2013. Oh, we've seen this. We've seen this. Okay, so this is the journey. Is there no new footage in here? That lo that lunar hair always used to blow my mind. Nestalum. The day-night cycles, all I say, were just spot on in this game. Um, absolutely spot on. Loved them. Okay. Two thousand fourteen. I also saw some people saying the music was shit. That means a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, I've seen all of this footage so far. Come on, hit me with something new. I want to see the uh, bit from the GDC. And uh, I'm going to say, guys, when I say that they should um, focus less on the graphics and more on the story, I'm going to say, that's kind of not true. It, my area doesn't stem from the graphics, it's more from the open world environment. The open world environment, now, unless you can fill it up and not give centuries old um, fetch quests, uh, go linearity. Linearity was the best part of the game, but I've said, oh, here we go, 2017, here we go. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, God. Right, I'm going to pause it there. Oh, sorry, I'm going to do some pausing. I've not seen this before. What is this area? This looks like this could be Solheim. Desert, so Solheim was a sun nation, and they were kind of... We, uh, we saw sort of images, and they were kind of deserty. And this looks like something from Lightning Returns. You know the uh, dunes in Lightning Returns? <laughs> that just looks incredible. And that looks like some Sol... Oh, no, wait. Is that the wall? Is that the wall from Kingsglaive? It kind of looks like the similar kind of architecture. Oh, I don't know. Let's just continue. <laughs> I'm kind of just looking for what might be in the DLCs. Yes. 
I say a lot of people ask me what do I think about the off-road regalia. I'm kind of excited. That grass, though. I saw something. I'll go back in a minute. Oh, new tank. Oh! No. Oh! Oh, that's Cerberus! That's Cerberus! Whoa, shit, why the fuck is Cerberus in the game? I, at this point, I kind of don't care about the graphics. <laughs> oh no, let's just go back. Sorry, 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 two seconds, two seconds. So that, that grass was incredible. I mean, look at that. A million blades of grass. That is beautifully detailed. And so I remember you're watching this through YouTube. It's the other thing. Whatever you're seeing, remember it's through YouTube. So you're going to see my version. It's not going to look as good, but it does. It looks fantastic. I've got on the high settings. Uh, but look, who the fuck is all this? Arden? Why is uh, they're running along with Arden? It kind of looks like Ravus. Who, who's that in the back? Was that Gentiana? That could have been Gent. That's Gentiana. Why are they all running together? What the fuck's going on? Um, but guys, Cerberus. He's back from Kingsglaive. Please put uh, Cerberus in the DLC. Please. Let's just see it one more time. <laughs> Level 47, Cerberus. They've made an in-game model of Cerberus. And I said he wasn't dead from Kingsglaive. I said it. I said when he fell down that pit. Hell no, that ain't the last we've seen of Cerberus. And I kind of looked like a massive dick when the game came out and there was no Cerberus. But he's back and he's in a DLC. And he's in Lestalum. Curious. Could that be Dark World Lestalum? Remember, guys, I, uh, they theorised that there was a Dark World Lestalum they started working on. And that was sort of at se oh, it was being sieged by demons. And Demon Slayer Eris was having to take care of it. Has Cerberus got into Lestalum? But nevertheless, could Cerberus be in an upcoming DLC? That'd be a super fight, uh, super awesome fight. Oh, just destructible regions. Destructible regions. Oh. Oh, I've only just noticed how destructible all of this is. Oh, wowza. Wowza Rooney. Amazing. The studio that bought you FF15. Uh, Alright, so there it is, guys. A lot of unseen stuff. Uh, it looks like an unseen region. We haven't seen anything like that desert region before. Um, and all in all, were the graphics on that? Amazing. Yes, especially that turf. When they said about the new uh, NVIDIA turf effect that they've worked on. The grass does look amazing. And, you know, I I'm sitting here and I like all of these things, but yeah, I am going to say I agree with certain people in the comment section, you know. Does this mean this is going to be a PC port? Does this mean this is going to be runnable? Because again, we've seen so many tech demos from Final Fantasy that it's hard to be excited that any of this could become real. And that's the problem. That's why when I look at tech demos, it's like, oh, this looks so beautiful. But then a little thing in the back of my head has to say, Pez, you're probably never going to see this or play this, or hold this in your hands. But nevertheless, that's dope. I'm glad to see that they're still working through the Luminous. This is um, very, a very good sign, guys, for uh, things going forward. Because at the end of the day, Tabta's kind of green-lighted FF16, said it's very likely FF16 will happen. Um, will that happen on Luminous? I have no doubt about it. So the more they flesh out from this engine now, the better the likelihood that FF16 won't struggle from the same similar kind of time constraints. So... Oh, yeah, that was nice. And um, yeah, once again, guys, I'm not going to harp on about what, what the issues with uh, open world are and about graphics. But just know it all goes hand in hand. It all does affect one another. And so much of the arguments going down here. Final Fantasy 15, meh, Witcher 3. Um, I, I would, I would, do I agree with that? I love the pants off of Final Fantasy 15. But um, all I'll say is Witcher 3 did open world right. It did its quests in the way that I write. So, uh, I do like Final Fantasy XV. I've played Witcher 3. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that statement. Personally, I did enjoy XV more, but I can actually see that Witcher 3 objectively did open world better. And uh, I don't know if this is a new era for Square Enix, if open world is going to be a new era for uh, Square Enix and for the Final Fantasy series. Um, if it is, I'm going to say it, guys, straight. You have to tidy up those quests. No, fetch quests that were pretty much predominantly uh, dominating the 2010 
open world eras, you know, those are some really outdated quests that you had in there. Um, people, games that are like Witcher 3 that are doing open world properly now, they've got quests that tie into the story. And they've learnt that the best way to tell a good story through open world, because it's very, very difficult, is to do it through the questing. So I'll say that when Tabitha told us that all of the quests were going to be relevant to the story and they weren't going to be boring fetch quests, that weren't a lie. There were boring fetch quests in 15. I, I can say that, open and honestly. And that's really where you can cheat. Um, now even this, this comment here, the story was good, but man, it could have been longer. I uh, 100% agree with that. It was a very good story for what it was, but it could have been longer. And yeah, you can kind of cheat and use NPC quests um, to go about that. But you know what, guys? Now I look at it. Now I look at the fact that there's all this backstory of Ifrit Eos and the dungeons and um, how you really have to just sit and look at, say, the Rock of Ravito uh, to notice it. I kind of understand the quest now. Have you noticed how the Viv quest and a lot of the quests sent us to the area just to actually look? Like, we'd have to take a picture of the Disc of Corthus or the Rock of Ravito. And it, it forced people just to stare at it. I think what Square Enix were doing there was um, they were trying to make us figure out that the Rock of Ravito with Ifrit and Eos' burned corpses. Because we, we'd seen those imageries. We've seen the wing, we've seen the horns. And uh, but for the life of me, I would never figure that out still. So I think that Square Enix are having way too much expectation <clears throat> that when they hide this much story, this thing, there is so much hidden story in this game, that we're going to figure it out, because we're really not. Even I didn't figure it out until, what was it, two months after the game now? Three months? Bloody, no, it's fucking... It's four months after the game, and we've only just really un unraveled um, a huge portion of what F15 was hiding behind the scenes. Four months to fully uncover a game. Jesus Christ. Can we expect a PC port? Uh, a huge debate in the comment section, and some people say, no, this means nothing. Uh, I think this is a very good chance this is a PC port. While Square Enix have done a load of tech demos on PC that never made it to the PC for the actual game and for us, the consumer, this is a bit different. They've spoken many times about wanting to do a PC port, many, many times, and uh, they've said about how they're going to have to work on it graphically and work it in graphic test environments before they can release it to the PC. Well, they're doing all of those things now. So is this going to come to the PC? Hell to the yeah, it most definitely is. There it is, guys. That was pretty dope. Uh, again, I'm not much of a graphics junkie, I am the story junkie, but I can appreciate good graphics when I see it. And FF15, while they got sloppy, this is the thing, Does did 15 have good graphics? I pointed out why it did have good graphics, and it did, it looked visually fantastic. But there were areas where it was out of sync, and the things that let it down to make it look like shit. And it was things like the lip syncing being out of place, some of the movements being jerky, um, and almost kind of glitchy in areas. Just things that no matter how beautiful the world is, um, it can make it just look bleh. Yeah. Out of voice lip syncing in a beautiful world, people will look at that and go, ugh, the graphics in this game are shit. Actually, the graphics are very good, but it's just the minor points that aren't perfected. And this is the thing, guys. While they're here perfecting the story, are you perfecting the lip syncing? Are you perfecting the movement and the animations and the emotions of the characters? Because I think that those needed more work than the actual environment itself. And even the environment itself, how do you make that look good? Honestly, filling it out. Filling it out with more trees, more rivers, more environments, more scenery, more um, density and more monsters. Um, so yeah, packing it out. So let's see where they go from here, guys. I am very, very excited if some of that cut stuff that we just saw in that trailer make it through to the DLC, but there it is on the table. Until the next video, my fellow peasants, Kubo!